how to submit a tax return in Germany is probably the most common question I get on this channel. So in this video, I will show you exactly how to submit a tax return using an online app called Wundertax. In order to correctly fill out your income tax return forms, you will need to prepare some information in advance. Most people will need to supply the following details in their forms. Your tax ID or tax identification number, the details of your local tax office or finance arm, the IBAN of your German bank account, your employment tax statement called Lohnsteuerbescheinigung, receipts or proof of payments for tax deductions, more on that later on in the video. Use my link to register and get a 5 euros discount on your first tax return submission using Wundertax. The best thing is that you can do all of your tax return calculations without any fee. And if you decide to submit your German tax return using Wundertax, only then will you have to pay the fee. Go to this URL if you want a 5 euros discount. To sign up, you simply need to put in your email address. After doing that, you'll get a confirmation email on your provided email. Simply click on the confirmation and you will be able to log into Wundertax web app. I already have an account with Wundertax, but if you create a new account with them, you'll have something similar to what I'm having right now. Click on add a year. Now you'll get a lot of options. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, if you are submitting a voluntary tax return, you can submit up to four years in the past. You can select whichever year is applicable for you. For us, we are going to submit a tax return for the year of 2022. So we're going to click on 2022. Now on the left hand side, we have seven options to choose from. The first one is our personal data. In the drop down menu, you can select whichever year you want to submit. Then we are going to provide our first name, last name, date of birth. Next, we have the address. This address needs to match the address that you were living in during the following year. So we are submitting a tax return for 2022. So this address needs to be valid for the year of 2022. If you had multiple addresses, make sure you have the latest one written down. If there's any additional information, simply write it down here. Based on our address, our tax office will be selected automatically. But if there is an error, you can select from the drop down list and select the appropriate option. After that, we have the religion option. You can select from the provided options, but if nothing matches, you can select other and continue. After that is our family status. This is really important. The same thing applies for the year you're submitting the tax return for. So in the year 2022, if you're single, select that option. If you are married or whichever is appropriate for you, for the year of 2022 you have to select that not for your current status but for that year next we will have to provide our income information this information will be taken from the loan store that you get usually in the january salary slip or if you ended an employment you usually get it with your last salary slip if you had multiple employments then you will have multiple loan store if for example you were not able to get a loan store from any of your employers you can either contact your employer and get your loan store Bishanigung or if you are unable to contact your employer or if by any reason your employer is not giving you your loan store Bishanigung, you can contact your relevant finance arm and get your information from them. Here we're going to select I have received income as an employee or I have received income as a mini jobber. Next, we will have to provide the occupation name. So you can provide whichever is applicable for you. It doesn't have to be the exact name. And if you had multiple jobs in that year, please enter the most recent one. Here we have an example of the loan store Bishani Moon. On the left hand side, we have some numbers. And on the right hand side, we have a value in terms of euros and cents. We will have to provide the number in terms of euros corresponding to the number that is given here. So the first option is the Steuer Klasse. You can have multiple tax classes within a year. If you had more than one tax class, then please provide the most recent one. For example, if you had tax class 1 in the month of January and February, you had tax class 6 in the month of March and April, and after that, from June onwards, you had tax class 3, then you will have to provide the latest one, which is tax class 3. After that, we will provide our annual gross wage. This corresponds to number 3. If we have a look again, on the left hand side, we have number three in our 
Launch to a Bishaningung, simply write down whichever value that corresponds to this number. So I'm going to just quickly fill in this information. If your income tax certificate has fields 7 to 21 and 29 to 32, you can click here and provide that information. But in many cases, these fields are left empty. Next, if you receive the energy lump sum in your wages based on a flat rate, then you can click here. This applies only if your income was earned according to section number 40A of the German income tax law. Next, we have the option of self-employed income. Here you can declare your self-employment income with the exception of some cases which are not covered in under tax. You can get the details of that from here. But for many employees in Germany, they are not self-employed. So I will not go through this section. Next, we have other sources of income. If you had an income as an employee outside Germany, click this option. If you had received unemployment benefits, click here and provide the details. For people who have received payments from health insurance like sick pay, maternity allowance or transitional allowance, they have to click here and then provide their details. For many who are watching this channel, they have probably started investing in stocks or cryptocurrencies. They will have to select this option and provide the information from their capital gains or capital contribution. If you are using Scalable Capital or Trade Republic, you will get an income tax statement from these brokers, which you can use to provide information based on your tax certificate. Simply open that tax statement and write down the lines that are matching in that statement. For example, in your tax certificate on the line number seven, you will have your capital income, profits from share sales, from premium gains or trans forward transaction. If there is data from row number 11 to 14, use that as well. Next, we have the saver lump sum used. So this is the Spar Pausch Betrag, which I have mentioned in many of my videos. If you have used up any of your savers lump sum, again, this information is provided in the certificate. If you set up your savers lump sum settings in Scalable Capital or Trade Republic, fill out all of the information from your tax certificate. If you have a broker that is not German based, then you'll either have to calculate this information on your own or with the help of a tax consultant. After that, you can select income from part time voluntary work. If you have pension, if you have received rental income, select this option. Please hit the like button if you are getting value from this video and consider subscribing. Next, we have a very important option of capital gains from cryptocurrencies. If you had any kind of profit from cryptocurrencies, simply select that option. Here we'll have to provide the date of purchase, purchase price, date of sale, current, exit value, and income related expenses. I have explained this section in detail in one of my cryptocurrency taxes in Germany video, which you can watch in detail. But as a recap, you only have to provide information for individual blocks of cryptocurrencies. For example, if you bought Bitcoin multiple times in the previous year, then you sold a small section of it. You only need to provide the buying date of that cryptocurrency purchase price of that small block and date of sale and exit value of that small block. If you had multiple buys and multiple sales, then you will have to sum up all of those buy orders and sell orders and provide the appropriate value. You will have to provide individual information for every single cryptocurrency. Here you can provide each cryptocurrency. For example, provide details for Bitcoin, then use another option for Ethereum, Cardano, so on and so forth whichever kinds of cryptocurrencies you have. You can also provide profit from gold, real estate, postage stamps or coins, paintings, antiques, old timers, boats, and other assets of this class. If you had any loss carry forward, you can give the notice from the finance arm from the previous year and any loss carry forward information can be put in this section. If there is an error, you will get an error message asking you to fill in the information properly. Then simply click save and continue. In this section, we are going to provide our expenses. During this year, if you had any job search expenses, select this option. Here we can provide our tax deductible cost. For example, taking passport photos, photocopies, binders, postage costs, official certifications, stationaries, books, travel cost, cost of job posting, so many things. Click on more info to get all of the information related to these expenses. So here we're going to provide all of the costs that have incurred 
because of a job search. Next, if you have provided any contributions to the university as an alumni, any seminars, additional tuition fees, you can put in as food built on costing. If you are a part of a professional association and if you have any expenses related to that, provide them here. In the next section, we have the tax advice, tax software or tax literature costs. So the cost that you have to pay for this year's tax return can be deducted in your next year because you're paying the fees for the previous year's tax return in this year. So if you paid a tax return using an online software, you can provide that expenses in this section. Next, if you had any work-related insurances, for example, service liability, accidental insurance, protection from employment rights, legal insurance, you can select this option, provide the description of the insurance and put in the costs here. You can provide as many work-related insurances as you want in this section. After that, we have our telephone and internet cost. This value is not a flat rate and the tax office accepts a maximum of 240 euros per calendar year. And unfortunately, there's no guarantee of an acknowledgement. So we can provide the maximum amount according to Wunder Tax. The same thing is true for bank account management fees. Last year, my main bank account cost me 84 euros. So I'm going to write down 84 euros and it depends on the tax office if they accept it or not. Then we have the verbum costing, so any additional income related expenses such as work related, lawyer fees, interest on interest on education loan, you can provide those informations in this section. Once you're done, simply click on save and continue. This section we can provide detail for our work or study related item costs. So if you bought a laptop, computer, printer, smartphone, software, professional job or study related literature, workwear equipment for your workplace, you can provide all of this information here. So if your cost for these things was lower than 110 euros, simply click on this flat rate. However, if you had individual cost, you can provide each and every individual cost by selecting this option and providing the details. For example, if you bought a MacBook Air of 2022, then you can write down the name, let's say it was 1600 euros and the date of purchase. Obviously you need a payment slip or any sort of verification that you did buy this equipment. If you bought a used item from eBay or any other online service, you can always show the invoice of that online service. And if you bought it from someone in person, then you can try to contact that person and ask them to give you some sort of invoice or some sort of proof that you bought this from them at this specific price. But if you do not have any proof, then if the finance arm asked you for this proof, then this expense might not be accepted by the finance arm. So we provide all of the details and save and continue. Next, we have transportation costs to and from work and home office expenses. When it comes to commuter allowance, the tax office takes into account a flat rate of 30 cents per kilometer from your home and your workplace, regardless of how much expenses that incurred for you. From the 21st kilometer, the distance allowance is 38 cents per kilometer. Here, we are going to provide our home address and our work address. Then in this section, the shortest distance is automatically calculated. After that, we provide from when did we start working till when and how many days a week do you work. In the next option, we provide any holidays, business travel or sick leave days. After that, we provide our home office days. These days are subtracted from the number of trips to your work from the above section. So it will be automatically deducted from these days and a lump sum allowance will be automatically added to you. If you use a public transport, you can provide the transportation costs in this section. Now, obviously, if you had multiple residences in a year, you can provide that in an additional entry. So let's say in the first six months, you had an address A, you provide this address in this section. If you had address B in the next six months, you could provide this information here. Same goes if you change your work and it was at another address or another city, you can provide multiple entries and give the information that is specific to the home address and the work address within that specific time frame. In the next section, we can provide additional costs. For example, any child benefits, home related expenses, workshops or seminars that you have attended. If you have a separate workroom, you can add those costs. Additionally, you can provide work related relocation information, business travel, if you have multiple households, any 
donations and membership fees that you're paying, other types of insurances, medical costs, disability costs, private health insurance and statutory health insurance information in these sections. For example, if you have a separate workroom, you need to check if you fulfill the following criteria. If that sounds good, simply click add it. Now here you can provide the details of size of the office room, size of the residency, portion of the room, then different types of costs, for example, maintenance costs in terms of rent, in terms of building maintenance, in terms of electricity and garbage, etc. Then you can provide any equipment costs, for example, bookcase, desk, chair, shelf, lamp, other furniture. All of this information can be provided in this section. Many of these expenses might not apply for you. So remember to only select the options or the expenses that are applicable for you. If none of the additional costs are applicable for you, you can skip additional costs. In our case, we're going to skip additional costs. In the final section, we have to provide the data for the tax office. Where should the tax office transfer your return? Now, this can be the same person that is doing the tax return or another account. Write down the name and IBN number, the SWIFT and the financial institution will automatically be populated. Next, we'll have to provide our 11 digit tax ID number. If you have a tax number in a different format, click this option and provide the tax number here. Next, we're going to provide our telephone number so that the tax office might be able to reach us here. If you have any additional information, here you can mention any information, expenses or income you want the tax office to take into account which has not already been mentioned in the previous sections. Next, we go to the summary. If there are any errors, make sure that you go to that specific section and fix that error so that there are no problems with the tax office. If there are no issues, this is where we will get our approximated tax return amount. This will be returned approximately within 3 to 10 weeks. Up till this point, there's no fee from Wunder Tax. But if you want to submit your tax return, you'll have to click on continue to payment where you will be asked to provide payment to Wunder Tax. Once the payment is done, then Wunder Tax will send your tax return to the finance arm automatically. Filing a tax return is only worth it if you optimize your taxes. In this video, I share exactly how to do that. So thanks for watching Black Bison and I'll see you in this video.